Hi everyone, this is Dr. Khan, and uh, so today, uh, in keeping with uh, continuing to give you information that'll help you through this time, uh, we're going to talk about uh, some nutrients, and yesterday I talked about vitamin C, how that can be very, very important for people with a specifically cold and flu and viral infection, and specifically vitamin C, the way it helps is not that vitamin C kills the virus, is that it reduces oxidative stress and inflammation as a result of the viral infection. So speaking of oxidative stress and, and inflammation, I want to discuss today, beyond vitamin C, another compound that's critical for uh, helping your body to decrease inflammation and can actually serve a role in helping you in viral infections. So let's talk about glutathione. So let me share my screen with you, folks. Uh, Kino, there we go. All right, so glutathione is really a magic molecule. It does so many different things. Now, glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body. That means out of all the antioxidants, this is perhaps the most important. And uh, it is produced by every single cell in the body. However, there's a daily limit, meaning you only make so much in a day. It's not an infinite, unlimited supply. So when you run out, then your body gets hit. So think of glutathione as a bulletproof vest. It's there to protect your cell, right? So when you have some kind of infection or inflammation, that inflammation is going to uh, damage the cell. The glutathione is a bulletproof vest that takes a hit instead of the cell. So your cells are unsaved. When the glutathione takes a bullet, it breaks apart, but your body has ability to recycle it based on nutrient status. Now, glutathione is so important as an antioxidant because the reason why every cell in the body makes it is because we're oxygen-breathing species, right? So for us to use oxygen, oxygen is a really reactive species, meaning oxygen in the body oxidizes. And when it oxidizes, it creates oxidative stress, which is another, way for, another word for inflammation. So think of oxidative stress as like combustion, you know, like when you burn gasoline, you get combustion and you're going to get exhaust fumes. By us combusting oxygen to make energy, we get oxidative stress. And that's the reason why we take antioxidants to fight oxidative stress. Because by breathing oxygen, we need oxygen for energy. But by burning that oxygen for fuel, we create this inflammation naturally. And that's why as we age, we tend to you know, become more and more inflamed. And we, we reduce our antioxidant capacity because we have more time to be exposed to oxygen and to create this oxidative stress. And that's why antioxidants are so important. And there are antioxidants that you eat from food, like vitamin C you get from food, and selenium you get from food, different things. But then there's also antioxidants your body naturally produces because it's so important. So glutathione is that antioxidant that your body naturally produces. Okay? And glutathione is especially important in immune function, both in fighting infection, but also in people with autoimmune disease in establishing immune tolerance so your immune system doesn't attack itself. Now, glutathione, beyond just immune function, it does so much more. It helps regulate cellular events like gene expression, DNA synthesis. It regulates protein synthesis and repair. It regulates cell proliferation and cell death, so your cell apoptosis, signal transduction, and most importantly, cytokine production and immune response, which is where it helps with immune function. So this is really very important for, for during this time when we're you know, thinking about how to get our immune system ramped up to help defend against virus, glutathione is one of the key things. Now, in this article uh, published in the journal Antiviral and Immuno, uh, I'm sorry, in the journal Current Medical Chemistry in 2006, it says that glutathione, which the chemical name is GSH, glutathione is involved in many cellular functions such as detox, amino acid transport, production of coenzymes, and recycling of vitamin E and vitamin C. So it actually help you to utilize nutrients better. Decreased glutathione level has been found in numerous diseases such as cancer, viral infections, and immune dysfunctions like autoimmune disease. And many antioxidant molecules such as glutathione and N-acetylcysteine, which I'll talk about later on in this, uh, in this uh, video, have been demonstrated to inhibit in vitro and in vivo viral replication through different mechanisms of action. Accumulating evidence suggests that intracellular, meaning glutathione inside the cell, in antigen-presenting pre cells such as macrophages, influences T-helper-1-TH2 cytokine response. 
and I've talked about in other videos, the TA, T helper 1, TA, T helper 2, which I actually talked about yesterday in that vitamin C video. And so glutathione help influences T helper 1, TH2 uh, response. And more precisely, glutathione de depletion can inhibit T helper 1 associated cytokine production and favor TH2 associated response. Remember yesterday when I talked about T helper 1, T helper 2, T helper 1 are your natural killer cells. And when people are chronically inflamed, you have the suppression of the natural killer cells, right? And that makes it so that you can't fight off infection. And glutathione depletion can inhibit that natural killer cell. This is one of the reasons why chronic inflammation deplete glutathione level so the killer cells start to go down. This is so critical. It ties into beautifully yesterday the topic we talked about about immune defense. Now, during aging, glutathione content declines. So glutathione production actually declines as we age, just as a normal part of aging. We just have less and less glutathione production capacity. And the immune system actually undergo a deficiency in the induction of T helper 1 response. Remember, T helper 1 is your natural killer cells. Reduced secretion of T helper 1 cytokines, which is associated with glutathione depletion, will weaken the host defense against viral infection. Folks, glutathione help to stimulate T helper 1 natural killer cells so they can fight virus better. Following infection, glutathione content remain low, so your glutathione content can actually be suppressed or decreased with an infection. Okay, so that makes it more of a case to take glutathione as a supplement to help boost the immune system. And moreover, the treatment of glutathione C4 increased glutathione content in organs, Reduce viral replication, induce predominant Th1 response. In conclusion, glutathione treatment could be used in elderly to contrast influenza virus infection by inducing immune response, in particular Th1 profile. This is uh, just so you know. This is an animal study, and this is uh, published in uh, 2019, May of 2019. So a really recent study, looking at uh, how how glutathione inhibit viral replication. Okay, a really really important study that shows us. How glutathione really help with this? This is another study uh, just uh, in, in 2003 uh, in the uh, journal Free Radical Biology and Medicine. And in this article, the author stated that glutathione inhibited the expression of viral matrix protein, inhibited viral transmission, and reduced virus-induced inflammation. Remember, much of the coronavirus problem is not the virus itself, but the inflammation that the virus produces. Right? That's why vitamin C is very helpful because it reduces oxidative stress and inflammation caused by the viral infection. So glutathione not only inhibit, inhibit the viral matrix protein, inhibit viral transmission, but also reduce that inflammation caused by the infection. Inclusion of glutathione in drinking water decreased viral load in both lung and trachea. So what they did in the study is that they actually uh, you know, uh, kind of inoculated these animals, the, the, the mouse, with uh, flu virus. And then they gave glutathione in drinking water, and they found that it decreased viral load in both the lung and the trachea, where it most matters. Okay? Oxidative stress or other condition that deplete glutathione in the epithelium of the oral, nasal, and upper air airway may therefore enhance susceptibility to influenza infections. What they're saying is that depleted glutathione or deficiency in glutathione and oxidative stress may increase your susceptibility to influenza infection, particularly in the oral and nasal and upper air passageway. Again, glutathione is critical here. So let's talk about different forms of glutathione. So here's S-acetoglutathione, or SAG. Now, S-acetoglutathione is a special type of glutathione with an acetyl group attached to it. And the S-acetoglutathione is well-suited for oral ingestion because this type of glutathione helps prevent breakdown in the GI tract. So it helps protect the glutathione molecule because glutathione is a very unstable molecule when you take it in a supplemental form. So that S-acetylglutathione protects it so it doesn't break down in the GI tract. And once it's absorbed inside the cell, the acetyl group is removed chemically, exposing the glutathione to the cell. And this is increases intracellular glutathione levels and support immune function and antioxidant status intracellular, which is important, inside the cell. And S-acetylglutathione is more stable than just a regular glutathione. So there's a lot of supplements out there that are just a reduced glut glutathione and is not as stable. And that's why oral supplement doesn't seem to work as well for glutathione because of the reduced form. The S-acetyl form is better. 
And that's why most of the time when you go and get IV injection, they're injecting you with a reduced glutathione because they're bypassing the oral route. They're injecting into your vein so they can use the reduced form. But in an oral supplement, you want to use the S-acetyl glutathione. That's important to know. So if, you're, if your glutathione product doesn't say S-acetyl, it doesn't have this benefit. Here's a journal article uh, in 20, 2008 in antiviral research, the journal antiviral research. It says that S-acetyl glutathione as a glutathione derivative is believed to enter cells directly. Then it is converted to glutathione in ratio 1 to 1, folks. 1 to 1 in a cytoplasmic en by cytoplasmic enzyme thioesterase. So you get this S-acetyl glutathione that converts into glutathione inside the cell at a 1 to 1 ratio. So the administration of pro-glutathione pro molecule may favorably substitute the use for the use of glutathione as such. So let's talk about N-acetylcysteine. N-acetyl-L-cysteine, or NAC, sometimes we call it NAC, uh, but NAC is basically an amino acid. It's a sulfur-containing amino acid, uh, containing the amino acid cysteine. Now, this NAC is a very potent antioxidant in its own right, and it serves many, many, many different functions, okay? So let's talk about some of these. Here in this particular article, it shows that NAC has uh, helped to decrease H5N1 influenza, okay? NAC inhibited replication of seasonal human influenza A virus, Study uh, performed on infected lung epithelial cells show that in reduced H5N1 repl replication, so reduce viral replication, it reduced viral-induced cytopathogenic effects, it reduced infect infection viral load 24 hours post-infection, so after 24 hours, it's able to start to already reduce the viral load, and it decrease the production of pro-inflammatory molecules, which remember, is the inflammation of the infection that's causing all these scarring of the lung, and that the lung, the pneumonia issue, that's killing people in coronavirus. So this study shows that NAC has ability to influence influenza virus. Another study here, published in 1997 in a European Respiratory Journal, shows that what is the effect of long-term treatment of NAC on influenza, H1N1 here specifically. 2,062 subjects, so this is a human study, randomized to receive either placebo or NAC tablets, 600 milligrams twice daily for six months. And uh, what they found is that local and systemic symptoms were sharply and significantly reduced in an NAC group. And only 25% of virus infected subjects under NAC treatment developed symptoms versus 79% in placebo group. So what that means is only 25% of people who took a NAC developed symptoms versus 80% of the people developed symptoms that took a placebo. So NAC made a huge difference here. Another study here published uh, in 2018, so this is a pretty recent study, the outcome of disease accompanied or caused by mucostasis depends both on the restoration of drainage function of the airways and on the effectiveness of the immune mechanism against pathogens. Again, it's important to know that in coronavirus, this is the same thing. In any kind of these virus that affect the upper respiratory airways is that you get these mucus production due to inflammation. So restoration of drainage function of the airway is important. Is one of the ways that you can help to get rid of these uh, infections faster. NAC possess pleiotropic immunomodulatory properties, most of which contribute to the regression of clinical manifestation of acute and chronic inflammatory disease of the respiratory tract. So NAC, NAC and acetylcysteine specifically help with inflammation in the respiratory tract. And that biological and pharmaceutical Pharmacological effect of NAC include improvement in rheological properties of mucus, reduction of excess mucin production. So NAC is a great mucus reducer, folks. It's a great mucus reducer. It's used in hospital to reduce mucus. Restoration of mucociliary clearance and production of SIGA. Suppression of excess production of IgE and IgG4. These are immune markers. Destruction of biofilms. So NAC can actually help break down biofilm. Biofilm is a mucus that's produced by bacteria that makes them antibiotic resistant. So NAC can serve as a biofilm disruptor and inhibit the formation. Suppression of adhesion of pathogenic bacteria to the epithelial cells. And NAC is an antioxidant in its own right. And it also helps regulate the production of pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic cytokines. So NAC is a really useful tool in upper respiratory infections.
NAC can act as a precursor for reduced glutathione. So NAC actually help you to make glutathione, which we already discussed how important it is, and also as a direct reactive oxygen species scavenger. So what that means, NAC actually help you break down inflammation, serves as an antioxidant in its own right. In this way, NAC can interfere with several signaling pathways that play a role in regulating apoptosis or cell death, angiogenesis, which is making of new blood vessel, and cell growth and inflammatory response. NAC therefore may influence mucin production or expression by acting on oxidative stress and inflammation play a role as a mucolytic agent. Folks, NAC help reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, which is why the virus is so deadly because it creates such severe inflammatory response. NAC help to reverse that. And then uh, for gut health, glutathione is critical for gut health. Glutathione actually help with uh, leaky gut. It help with any kind of immune system problem. So glutathione will be critical if you have GI problems. Okay, so that's definitely for good for kids and good for people with GI problems. Gloria, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Please help me share this information. And Candace, thank you for watching. Please help me share this information with other people. And uh, we have JP, thank you again for joining me today. So every day I'll be on to kind of let you guys know what are some of the things that you can do to help yourself from a nutrition model. Let me see if we have other people here that I need to catch the question. Looks like that's it. All right, great. Thank you so much for watching and uh, please share this video and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.